Hey, so in this video, I'll be going through my resume that got me my Warframe programming internship and giving some general resume writing tips. All of the resources that I mentioned will be in the description down below. Okay, so first I'll go over the general structure of my resume. And I got this resume template from OneSalting, which is a career consulting company, which was completely free. If you go to their website, somewhere you can find where the resume template is, then they'll send you it in an email. Then you can make a copy of the Google Doc and you'll have it uh, for you to edit. Another popular resume template is Jake's resume, uh, just someone's random resume that they have in LaTeX. And this is Overleaf, which is a web editor for LaTeX. If this sort of LaTeX thing is maybe too advanced or not for you, then I would recommend using the one salting resume template. So back to my resume. You should probably keep your resume to one page unless you have a lot of experience, maybe 10 plus years of experience in the industry. So if you're in university or maybe early on in your career, definitely stick with one page because you probably won't have enough valuable info to stretch to two pages. And usually they don't really like reading two page resumes or more. I've seen pretty bad ones, ones that were even four pages, including very unnecessary things. So try to keep your resume pretty brief and concise, only highlighting the most important parts. So the general structure of my resume starts with experience, which might be unusual because for most applications, you'll have education first because people do care about education, maybe less so nowadays, but education is very important. But for this resume, I applied internally through Waterloo's internal co-op job board. So they know that everyone goes to University of Waterloo. And if you are taking computer science, then everyone will be taking approximately the same courses at the same time. So I put the education at the bottom here uh, for this resume. So in this resume, I have experience first, then projects, so side projects, then I have my skills, education, and interests. So skills are a, a nice thing to have where you just put everything in the same place, all your languages you're familiar with, all the technologies you're familiar with. And some people like putting that at the top. So when uh, recruiters read it, then they know everything that you have, whether you meet requirements in the job description. But I don't think that's particularly necessary to put it at the top because if you have your experience and your projects with the languages and technologies included in them, then they'll know anyways when they scan through that. And also just by listing skills, they don't actually know whether you're actually competent with them because you can really list anything you want there and they won't have any way to verify it until they get to your experience and projects. Interest is also optional, and if you want, you can combine it with the skills section. So it will be skills and interests. The only real benefit of interests is just finding a common ground with the interviewer. So you can connect uh, with them over that. And one time I did actually talk about one of my interests during an interview. Uh, where the interviewer was also very interested in audiophile headphones and was talking about how they were going to get some really expensive pair of IEMs. I'll go through 
sort of the, the structure of each section. For experience, you're going to want to list your experiences in reverse chronological order. So the most recent experience at the top and least recent experience at the bottom. So right here I have my experience at a tech company at the top, which was my most recent at the time, and then my previous internship at a bank quality assurance uh, the year before. For each experience, you want to list the company name and location sort of optional. So you want the name of the role and you want the dates, the start and end dates. Then for the bullet points, the bullet points are extremely important and you want to order them by importance. So you want the most important ones at the start and the least important ones at the bottom. Sometimes recruiters won't even go through all of your bullet points. Sometimes they'll just read the first one or two or three maybe. So definitely put the more important ones at the start. Then for the structure of the bullet points, you have a couple of options, but for both options, you want to use a action verb, usually in past tense, unless you're currently working that job. Uh, so you performed an action or you use an action verb to do something with some result, or you achieved some result by doing some action. And you want to weave your technologies and languages, whatever you use to achieve that in the bullet point as well, because they do do some keyword searching through your resume. There's a couple of resources for action verbs. So some good action verbs from MIT are here, depending on what sort of skills you want to show or express. Then there's also Indeed that also has a very large list of action verbs. Quantifying your results is great if you have things you can quantify, like stats such as improving efficiency by a certain percentage, reducing the time it took, how many users you've impacted, or how much money you've managed. When you're on the job, you want to sort of measure that. You can measure how long a task took or a process took, and then after your change, measure how much it has improved. Next for projects, you don't need to have the projects in reverse chronological order. You can have them by importance. You don't have to list the dates either. But for each project, you want to list the technologies and languages that you've used. And if you participate in a hackathon or a game jam, then you can list any awards that you got, if you got any, uh, and that's usually pretty impressive. For more game dev oriented roles, you can cater your resume by including more game dev projects, side projects. And if you are going into game dev or thinking of going into game dev, I definitely recommend participating in a game jam. They're usually online and they aren't open to just university students. They're open to really anyone who wants to make a game and gain some experience hands-on over a weekend, sort of like a hackathon. Here I have three projects, one of which was a game jam, the first one. And the second one was a personal project that I did on my own, um, which is a multiplayer game called Flappy Golf 3D, inspired by a game that my friends would play in middle school and high school called Flappy Golf which was a 2D game. So I made a 3D version of it, spin-off, and that was actually probably the most important thing on my resume for, for my internship at Digital Extremes, arguably. 
it's it was definitely one of the more important parts because one thing was the C++ experience and then during the interview I was asked about this particular project uh, a few times because it was multiplayer. And then the last project is a project for one of my computer science courses which was to make a board game for my final project uh, in a team of three people. Then in skills I have two lists, one for languages, one for technologies. Usually you keep them separate. You can combine them, but it's nice to have them separate. And for education, you want to have the name of your university. Yeah, I want to have the exact name of your program or your major. For me, it's BCS Computer Science Honors Co-op. And then you want the at least the graduation date. You can have the start and end date. It's really up to you, but for me, since my program is a five-year program with co-op or internships included, then sometimes maybe recruiters won't know that it's a five-year program and you might be treated as a person one year younger than you or with one year less experience. In the bullet points for my education, I have awards, coursework, and additional coursework. And coursework is useful when applying externally, so not through your university's job board, because they do want to know what sort of courses you've taken, like especially algorithms and data structures. Also, object-oriented software development was a, a very good one. And additional coursework, if you've ever taken free online courses, which I do recommend, uh, especially CS50, which was an introductory computer science course, if you are thinking of going into computer science and haven't gotten any experience with it, with coding or anything, I recommend taking that course. That is uh, a nice thing to have to show that you have initiative and you're open, willing to learn. And then the interest section, I have game development, playing ice hockey, learning piano and audio file headphones. So that's all I have for my resume really. And there is some extra things to consider. Formatting, especially formatting should be covered by the templates. So if you make a copy of the templates, you should be good for the most part. But to double check, you want to use readable fonts like Times New Roman or Arial. And then spacing, you want to keep consistent. You want margins to be at least 0.5 on all sides. You want to have consistent dates and punctuation because a common error is having January abbreviated to J-A-N and then having in another place the full month name uh, written out. So having consistent dates and punctuation, uh, you want to have all bullet points have the period at the end or none of the bullet points to have the period at the end. Also throughout the entire resume, you don't want to use any personal pronouns. So the checklist of, of everything really for the entire resume, a good one that I found was by Resume Worded and it goes through formatting, the structure um, for each section. And yeah, I think it's just a very good resource to make sure that you did everything on your resume according to the standard. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below if you have any other questions and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. I'm also planning to make a video about a cover letter because I did have to write a cover letter when applying for this Warframe programming internship and apparently it was quite important so stay tuned for that.